So yeah, as Tassos said, uh, the topic and the theme of uh, my presentation is going to be more about digital marketing and marketing of new technologies and new methods for it. Uh, I'm Alina Kitikidi, as Tassos mentioned, and um, currently I am the dissemination communication manager at uh, CERC, at Southeast European Research Center. And uh, at the same time, I'm a full-time PhD candidate at the Management School of the University of Sheffield. I'm in my last year. And the theme of my PhD thesis is about consumers' visual attention to social media posts that they are promoting sustainability in fashion. And I'm searching and I'm exploring consumers' visual attention. And especially um, the thesis is based on millennials and generation uh, Z. Um, so I'm trying to explore about these participants, what attracts the attention of the eye when they are uh, searching for social media posts that they are about sustainability in fashion. And I'm doing so by using a neuroscience device, which is called eye tracker. And I'm going to explain more about the eye tracker later on on our um, uh, on my presentation. And this is what I'm currently doing. Um, so I have done my master's in digital marketing and social media and my bachelor's um, again on the University of Sheffield and my bachelor's uh, on the University of Macedonia on Balkan and Orienta studies. And uh, regarding my working experience, these are some bullet points of the latest uh, working experience that I had. Uh, because I have worked a lot as a volunteer to many th other things. So uh, I have been the social media uh, marketing consultant of the Fashion Revolution, which is the, an organization uh, that deals with uh, issues about sustainable fashion and the bad impact of fast fashion. And I have been the digital account executive at the advertising agency, of, um, which it was called, is called Malino in Athens. And I was dealing with digital marketing at this position. So, um, starting with technology and marketing, I'm sure that you already know that technology has transformed uh, tremendously marketing by creating campaigns that they are more personalized and by um, creating um, more integrated communication strategies and targeting um, our, our audience um, more effectively. So digital technologies offer new ways of gathering data about our consumers so we can learn more our consumers and um, have more information about them, them. So the data that we collect is a treasure for the startups, the brands, the companies, for everyone. So it's a source of information that makes helps us create better um, communication strategies. Uh, also social media, is an amazing tool for both the companies and for the consumers because uh, consumers are using social media in order to seek for uh, the best available um, product that they will address their needs. So the competition for the brands, the companies is wider. And there are a lot of uh, technologies in digital marketing which you can uh, collect uh, data for from your um consumers such as uh, google analytics or uh, ceo search engine optimization and so on um yeah before moving on to uh the trends of digital marketing i wanted to highlight some things about the digital natives and the digital immigrants so uh before creating our digital strategy campaign we have to have in mind that there are two group of people. Um, they are the digital natives that they were born after the 1980s. And are, they are these group of people, like they are millennials and generation Z, that they were born uh, in this digital um, communication with, and they were very exposed to these digital toys, if I can say. So they know how to use them very well. Uh, on the other hand, they are the digital immigrants that so they were born before the 1980s, and they are the baby boomers and the Generation X. So this group of people, they were used to uh, communicate with a different kind of media. So they were they didn't have messenger to send texts. So they had only handwritten letters. So they didn't have mobile phones. So they had line telephones. Uh, network television, and if they wanted to get informed about the news, the everyday news, they had to uh, buy printed newspapers and magazines and to read them. 
So as you can see, uh, when you are creating your social media campaign or your digital campaign or whatever it is digital, you should have in mind uh, where you want, what people you want to target. So are they digital natives or digital immigrants? Or do you want to target both of them? Which I'm not uh, suggesting, but you have to always uh, have in mind that there are two group of people um, on this digital um, world that we live in. So uh, the objectives of digital marketing are the five S's. So you always want to sell, serve, speak, save, and sizzle. So you, uh, I'm sure you want to grow sales through a wider distribution of the digital world. Uh, you have to serve your customers. So you have to add value through extra benefits of your uh, client service, client online service. Speak, you have to get closer to your customers uh, by creating communication with them and interaction. You are going to save money because uh, digital has this um, advantage of saving money because you will limit print, limiting print, store and rent costs. And also sizzle uh, to extend the brand online through enhancing the online experience uh, by using interactivity with your customers. So your customers want to feel that you are your uh, they you are your friends. So they want you to know that you're close to them, that you are uh, informing them every day and they have news from you every day on the social media. So they want to have this interactivity with you. Uh, these are some statistics about the digital um, marketing thing that we um, are now now living. So uh, they are 60% of Instagram users said that they would like to find their new products on social media platform. That's, this means, or on Pinterest. This means that people are searching for products to buy or services through social media and especially through Instagram because Instagram on um, the latest years uh, has created has created that uh, that we, we call these shorter sales funnels. So Instagram has its own shop on it. So you can, uh, so customers can go easily on their brand on the Instagram account, click on the product they want to buy, see the price and then go to, and then by clicking the link, go to the e-shop and buy the product or seek the product and the features of the product. So um, when you're creating your social media uh, strategy, you have to have strong uh, Instagram and social media plat social media uh, aware uh, awareness there. Also, mobile accounts of the almost fifty two percent of the media, uh, and while laptops only the forty four percent, almost forty four percent. So this means that we're, when you are creating your communication strategy, you should have in mind that you have to create uh, versions that they're optimized for mobiles, not only for laptops and desktops. Um, so now moving to uh, the coolest part of the presentation, these are the um, trending methods for digital marketing in 2021, and I can say in 2022 as well. So is uh, voice search, influencer marketing, nostalgia marketing, brand activism, uh, visually enhanced advertising, video content marketing, personalization, which is not a trend, but it's something that we all have to highlight and I will explain why, and neuroscience-based research tools. So starting with voice search, um, the latest years, voice search has been a, an amazing trend uh, that is uh, becoming more and more popular and it will be a trend for the, the years to come. So uh, voice search, it is done through many different technologies such as um, smartphones, smart speakers, laptops, etc. And it's amazing because 50% of online searches are being done by voice are being done, are being done by voice power. So um, Google, out of this 50%, Google owns the 30% of these voice activations. Um, and, and you can imagine the big number of voice activations and 3.25 billion people use voice active system. This is an amazing and a huge number uh, that we should get into the account. So studies uh, show that by 2022, more than 70% of searches will be done with voice search. So voice search is something that is going to stay for a long time. Um, now, moving on to influencer marketing, I'm sure that you 
I'm 100% sure that you already know the influencer marketing with influencers all around the world, that they are promoting products and brands. But now the trend goes to micro-influencers. So this means that brands and companies and businesses, they are looking for a micro-influencer that they have from 1,000 followers to 10,000 followers, not more. And the reason is the following. So first of all is the authority because micro-influencers, they have this uh, trustfulness. So the people that they follow them are not too many and they feel that they are connected with them and they feel that they know the influencer that they are following. So they have the authority. Second, it's the right targeted audience uh, because Micro-influencers have a small target audience. And when someone, um, a brand or, or a company wants to find a specific target audience, then they try to reach micro-influencers that they have a specific target audience. Also, there are more engagement, because as I said previously, people, they are tend to engage more with people that they feel more close to them, or they may have met once, or they know that it's a friend of a friend. So they are engaged more with them. And also it's cost effective because micro influencers, uh, they don't ask for too much money as they as like the big influencers do. Uh, this is one of my best one. It's nostalgia marketing because it focuses a lot on the um, feelings and emotions. So one of the latest marketing trends I use the nostalgia marketing, which aims to capture the audience's attention by motivating them and by uh, bringing memories of the past. So they are trying to create positive thoughts and emotions with throwbacks. And with this way, they are trying to build a connectivity uh, throughout the nostalgia in order to create these feelings with the customers and to make them come closer to the brand and to um, the service that they're offering. So I have uh, two videos from Super Bowl 2020 and 2021 that I want to show to you, which are about nostalgia marketing. And I'm gonna explain why later on. Did you steal my Cheetos again? Just tell him it wasn't you. But I caught you at the counter. It wasn't me. Saw you snacking on the sofa. It wasn't me. You even had him in the shower. It wasn't me. I even caught you on camera. You're the one who granted access to your snacks. Don't talk surprised that you sleep behind your back. You gotta keep tabs before uh. she emptied that bag. Let's review the situation. Orange fingers, red flag. To keep you on stash, you gotta hide it better. If she asks where they are, you say forget her. Never admit to a word. And please don't upset her. And if she keep on snacking, I guess you uh. let her. Well, did you? Wasn't me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the first time that's ever worked. Mm. New Cheetos Crunch Pop Mix. Cheetos has popcorn now? Hey, I'm gonna need you to... Never mind. You can't touch this. Help. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Can't touch this. I trust you. Stop. Have a time. I touched it. New Cheetos popcorn. It's a Cheetos thing. Cheetos has popcorn now? Hey, I'm gonna need you to. Never mind. You can't touch this. Help. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Can't touch this. I trust you. Stop. Have a time. I touched it. New Cheetos popcorn. It's a Cheetos mix. Okay, so what I said previously now makes sense because I was talking about the music that they were that they used in these two specific videos, that they're old uh, songs that bring memories to everyone that listens to them so um now makes sense and apologies for any inconvenience um and now let's play the 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 other um the other thing with the ikea virtual reality 
you ever tried to redecorate rooms with your eyes as you stroll through IKEA? Now you really can. Customers are invited to a playful interior lab. Here they can be inspired and visualize their very own personal solutions. At its heart lies an application that really brings IKEA to life, the virtual home experience, an interactive showroom that uses the immersive power of virtual reality for a whole new approach to product exploration, revolutionizing how customers engage in interior decoration. Through simple interactions, visitors can configure furniture items and room features. Photorealistic 3D renderings and high-definition binaural sound ensure a captivating 360-degree experience, one that lays the creative foundation for the customer's journey through the store. In the blink of an eye, they can combine different fabrics, swap the wall colour, and even change the time of day. The virtual home experience not only positions IKEA once again as an inspiring and innovative company, it sets its customers free to think beyond their usual means, making the most out of their visit and truly finding their very own room for life. As you um, can imagine, the, the, the experience of the customers inside the IKEA store, uh, how good it was because they had the opportunity to see how they imagine their house through virtual uh, reality. And this, has, and this makes happy customers. And what we want is happy customers. And uh, OK. Um, and now moving on to the artificial intelligence, um, like artificial intelligence, it could be through through like a chatbot. So chatbot is increasingly being applied and humanized with artificial intelligence technology. And uh, through studies, 45% uh, of users are feeling better when they interact with chatbot instead of real customer care stuff because they feel that they don't have to open any cameras or to talk to anyone. Um, so they feel more comfortable while they're texting and um, asking for information. And uh, chatbot is being used quite strongly in customer care fields because they want to have that they're supporting customers 24 seven. And this helps them handle a large number of customer requests. And now moving on to the personalization. Personalization is something that is a must in marketing. And of course, it's something that you should do on uh, digital marketing as well, but now in a different way because now technology has changed. So for instance, I've talked previously about the chatbot. So what you can do with personalized uh, chatbot and pop-up messages is that when someone enters your website or your Facebook page for the first time, uh, they should have like a personalized chat uh, message saying, hello, welcome to our website and stuff. But it should be a different message when someone uh, visits your website twice or thrice. So when someone comes again and again to your um, website, you should have like a message, uh, welcome back. Um, thank you for coming back and visiting our website again. And I hope you had, you had an amazing experience, things like that. And also, an amazing example of uh, uh, that personalized marketing is Amazon, that they are doing this personalization, that they're following this personalization approach. And if you want to personalize, uh, to make more personalized uh, act uh, activations, you should gather a lot of data and more and more data. And then you should generate your customer persona. So by collecting this, uh, this all this data, uh, which is a treasure, you should generate your customer personas. You should create your customer as a persona. And then you should map out your content, what you want to have as a content on your website or social media or whatever, and then create your personalized content and then personalize the whole experience. Um, and another trend uh, is video content marketing because people, they, they have, we are, all of us, we are living in a very fast paced life. So we don't have the time to read uh, long text or to um, 
and or to uh, text down. So we want something. We want to gather all the information that we want from a brand or from whatever throughout a, a small video. So 360 degree videos, it's something that is trending a lot the last years and it's going to be trending. Also live videos because people, they want to feel attached with your brand or your company or your service. So they want from you, they want to see that these there are human beings be, behind this brand. So they want live videos and to get more connected and engaged with you. Uh, more search optimized videos. So if you are, for instance, um, a brand that you are um, selling cosmetics, then you should have uh, personalized videos on how you can use these cosmetics. And this can be linked also with the next bullet point, which is the educational videos. So again, if you're having um, a brand that you, it sells cosmetics, uh, people want to learn more how they can use these cosmetics or uh, they want to have some editorials on how uh, they can uh, make their own makeup with these cosmetics or how they can use any other services or brands. So educational videos is something that people are looking for and searching for and also vlogs from brands for more or less the same um, for the same reasons as the above mentioned. And here there is a, an example of the 360 degree uh, video from National Geographic. But I want to, because if I play click here, if I click here, uh, you will not be able to see the whole experience of the 360 degree. So I'm gonna stop, stop sharing and um, show you through, um, uh, through, the, through YouTube. So um, give me a second. Okay, can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Okay. I realized that the perfect way for me to explore the ocean was with a camera. My name is Brian Scarry and I'm a National Geographic magazine photographer that specializes in ocean wildlife. Buck Island is this spectacular coral reef. You feel like you're in a storybook. drift through this place and you see these stands of elkhorn coral reaching up like the uplifted arms of a statue toward the sky. And they have that beautiful orangey golden color. As you can see, you can see more if you like um, 360 degree uh, videos, you can go and Google it. There are a lot of, a lot of 360 degrees that are amazing to, to view. Um, so now moving back to my presentation, we were here and um, now it's the part of neuroscience. So how neuroscience can be combined with digital marketing. So neuromarketing, it's something that it's not new. It's something that is uh, being applied to, uh, neuroscience is being applied to marketing for many, many years. And how we can use uh, neuroscience in digital marketing. So there are a lot of neuroscience devices such as the face, for instance, the facial coding that you use uh, facial coding systems measure and register the, the, the movements of the facial muscle, muscles that we have. So when we are happy, we have other, uh, other facial muscles that are moving. When we are sad, other, when we're angry. So uh, through sensors, we, while you are seeing, for instance, a horror movie, we can capture this facial, uh, facial muscles move, movements and we can 
uh, understand if you felt happy or if you felt shocked or if you felt fear while you were seeing, uh, for instance, a campaign. Um, another neuroscience device that helps on digital marketing is the galvanic skin response. So the galvanometer, it, what actually does it that measures the, um, the skin. So there are sensors on your hand that are put sensors on your hand. So while you are seeing, for instance, again, a horror movie or something that is very anxious, you might feel a bit sweaty on your hands. So through this, uh, through this device, we can measure this sweatiness and we can understand many things about your arousal, if you're calm, if you're feeling anxious and many other emotional states while you are seeing, viewing um, a digital campaign, a video or any other thing that it has visuals or you are on um, a specific environment. Another uh, neuroscience device that it can be used for digital marketing um, purposes, it's the EEG. So the EEG device, uh, what actually does, it's that analyzes the brain's electrical activity using a handband that you can see on your right, uh, that houses, that has a lot of collection of small sensors. So with these sensors, we can measure the brain waves. So while you are in the emotional arousal, because while you are seeing um, a romantic uh, movie, your heart, your heartbeat beats different uh, and more slowly um, compared to while you're seeing a horror movie. So what this measures is the, uh, the brain waves and the uh, emotional arousal um, in terms of if you're feeling uh, happy, sad, so we can measure emotions. And another device that I'm also using on my uh, PhD thesis, it's the eye tracker. So the eye tracking technology measures the eye movements of the eye while you are seeing something, while you are exposed to social media posts or to a video or anything that is visual or, or while you are on a supermarket. So we can measure what attracted the attention of the eye very quickly or what grabbed the attention of the eye for a longer duration. And this helps us understand uh, if uh, the consumers find something, um, for instance, the red, the, the red color, if attracts more the, the attention of the eye. So this helps marketeers to create more efficient and effective campaigns and um, online strategies uh, regarding the visual part. So here is um, an example of what Coca-Cola has done for neuromarketing purposes and how the eye tracker uh, it is, being, is being measured. small spots that you were saying is uh, the, the, the journey of the eye. So you can see how quickly our eyes moving and from one place to another. And especially when there are faces on the, um, on the campaign, this, the eyes are focusing more on the faces. And another uh, quick example of, um, next. This can also be a a rip up, I mean, for the eye tracker, you can use the eye tracking glasses and you, you can use also in supermarkets. We are at IKEA Barker B, just outside Stockholm, Sweden. Imagine if you could see what your customers see, what insights that would hold. 
Today we get the opportunity to follow one of our customers on a journey through the store. With eye tracking, we get an amazing opportunity to understand shoppers' attention and shopping behavior. Recruitment and screening can be based on existing segmentation or other categories according to IKEA's requirements. After a pre-interview and a quick and easy setup, the customer is ready to go. The red dots that you see represent exactly what the customer is looking at. The customer is now walking around IKEA, going about his errands, and at the same time giving us valuable information. Eye tracking provides a dynamic understanding of how shoppers navigate or browse through the store. Another customer's IKEA shopping bag with wood hangers attracts attention. A few minutes later, he reaches a bin of hangers and instantly picks up a pack. Let's stop for a moment and look at his eye movements. The gaze plot visualization shows that it is the product that attracts the customer. First, after finding the product, does the price sign become interesting. We can gather detailed information so about... we can have an idea how the eye tracker works and what information we can gather um, marketing related through this device. And um, actually that was it. I'm sorry for uh, the inconvenience uh, regarding the technological...